All right. So probably don't have uh, too many people that are going to show up for this live. Sorry in advance that I um, kept on playing with the time. I'm trying to find times that work for everyone while also working for me. <laughs> uh, and things are just always popping up for me. And so it's like, oh, can't do Monday. Anyway, today, whether you were watching live or post streaming, um, I'm continuing my little series that I'm doing where we are discussing, we are <laughs> disgusting, we are discussing every type and all of its facets. Um, oh, someone is here. Give me a moment. my wife. She's going to work out. <laughs> anyway, okay, so today we are talking about all of the types, I mean, all of the functions and their facets. Um, and essentially, what I mean by that is, so we already started with extroverted feeling last week. If you haven't already seen that one, check it out. Um, I went through all of the different things that I pretty much discovered about extroverted feeling, both within myself and then also um, observing other people, fictional characters, uh, real people, dynamics, et cetera, coaching, whatever. Um, this time we are talking about introverted feeling. I don't have this function in my immediate stack, so I won't be able to talk from like a personal experience, but I have a ton of FI users in my life, not only Am I married to one, but also my roommate is an FI user, my other, so I'm married to one and we live with an INTJ. Um, so there's that. And I lived with an ESFP for quite a few years. And yeah, I, I, I'm pretty familiar with FI. Um, and it's fascinating. It's definitely a fascinating function. Um, so in essence, I will go ahead and define FI for you at least in the way that I did in my blog, where I was pretty much briefly just uh, defining each function. Um, and then after that, um, we're gonna get into all the different facets of the function. And one of the things that's interesting about the facets of these functions, or one of the analogies that I like to use is the idea of an emerald. So what I mean by that is that Emeralds usually have, well, yeah, they're often depicted as kind of like a diamond in a way, and they have several different facets to it. So a lot of people, when they're using a function or if they're like getting into type and they're still like a little bit like early into type, then they're seeing like one side of the emerald pretty much. Like, okay, these are certain facets of the emerald, but the function is not just those three or four facets. It's the whole emerald. Um, hopefully you're following with me. So what I mean by that is that there are going to be a lot of people who you might know. Um, there are going to be a lot of FI users who might have some of these facets. And then there's going to be those same ones who might not have some of them tapped into. They have the ability and they have a quicker and more smoother, like easy access to be able to tap into those um, facets. Um, but that takes more like development. So I, I personally believe that each of our cognitive functions, especially like the, those that are like higher up in our stack, um, they're talents, um, kind of like superpowers. And then you can build skill with them. 
Um, so once you start to build, once you start to build skill with your cognitive function, you're no longer using it on an average kind of level. Now you're tapping into all of the different facets of that function, um, and you're exploring how to not only like just like see that, but like also like utilize it in your everyday life. So, like I said, today we're going to be talking about all of those different emerald facets of introverted feeling. Um, also known as FI. So the way that I defined it is concerned with the individual's internal values slash ethics and emotions, makes decisions based on what is most authentic or true to oneself, and scans for the motivations of others. People with this function as a strength usually have a very strong moral compass and feel their emotions more heavily than they feel other people's emotions but have spent a great deal of time understanding the depths of their own emotions enough to use it to mirror and empathize with others' emotions. These people can often appear aloof, individualized, free-spirited, and slash or self-centered. So now to get into some of these facets. Um, the first thing that I listed down was kind of like, and some of these might be repeated from the definition, but one of the biggest things that FI is able to um, identify is motivations. So people with introverted feeling, especially as a strength, they are really good at being able to identify the different motivations that are used for not only for themselves, but from identifying their own motivations. And they're also able to look at somebody else's motivations and be able to identify that. Um, so it's, it's, it's almost like, well, we're not going to bring other functions into this. Well, yeah, no, we won't go there, but essentially <laughs> that's, that's kind of how, um, FI, one of the ways that FI might work. So say for example, um, you want to work out, um, sure. You might say that your motivation is because you want to be healthy and this is that, but there might be another underlying motivation over there, which is pretty much, I want to have a good beach body. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but an FI user might be able to not only identify that within themselves, like, okay, I have this motivation, but I also have this one, I have this one, I have this one. And they're paying attention to all of those motivations. And then they're able to also do the same thing for you to be able to understand, like, mm, you probably have these other motivations going on as well. Um, so it's pretty interesting when you see like an FI user uh, actually, you know, be able to pin down those motivations, like for those of other people. Um, and the more healthy the FI user is, the more developed they are, then the better that they will be at doing this. Um, sometimes I've noticed that um, FI, when it's like in a tertiary position or even lower, they tend to think that they know the motivations of other people but they tend to have a negative view of their motivations. Like that's, these are the st stereotypical like TJs that are always thinking that somebody's out to get them or has an ulterior motive, you know? And sometimes, you know, people do have ulterior motives, but also at times, not always. Um, and that's, you know, the st that's the classic um, thinking that we are better at our tertiary or inferior function at times than we usually are. Um, it's not to say that you'll never be good at it. It's not to say that, uh, that a TJ will never actually accurately catch the motivation of another person. Um, it's just that, you know, if they, they, that would have to be like a pretty healthy TJ. They'd have to been able to understand their own motivations very well and then also be able to understand like um, finally like another person's motivations well enough to be able to get to that level. Um, so yeah, the second facet over there is a focus on core values and conscience slash identity. So that's another thing about FI. Um, it's pretty much the, like, when you're like a Christian, for example, you know, like you have certain like convictions, you know, um, and FI is the conviction function. So if an FI user has a certain conviction about something, then once they go outside of that, it immediately strikes them. Like they don't feel good about that. 
Um, now, the lower it goes in your stack, then the more you're able to ignore that um, for the sake of being able to accomplish a task. So, for example, if you have like an ETJ and oh, people are popping up in the chat, that's what's up. Um, definitely leave questions. I'll get to them as soon as I get through all the facets and everything like that. Um, and to make it easier, put like a Q and then a colon um, before you uh, ask your questions just from this point on. But yeah, so in uh, ETJ, for example, they, again, not always, they are really good ETJs out there, but they have a tendency um, to be able to put aside what their maybe like moral ethics are or their moral convictions, whatever it might be, maybe not even have really like developed ones for the sake of just accomplishing whatever it is that they have their goals set on. Whereas like an FI Dom, for example, would have a lot harder of a time doing that. This is why personality hacker calls it authenticity. They're looking for, you know, again, the motivations, but then also like, you know, the authenticity, like, okay, who's fake? Who's like not being like, who's acting from what they really are versus who's just doing whatever to get ahead, but they're not really showing their true face. Like FI users are usually very good at being able to identify that. That doesn't mean that FI users are the only ones that are, um, that are only ones that are authentic, just like it doesn't mean that um, FE users are the only ones that are harmonious, but it's just something, it's a nickname to like help you understand like what the function is focused on. Um, and FI is definitely focused on that inner moral compass and that inner like morality in that sense. Um, so it's a focus on core values and what their consciousness is and like, and pretty much like always consistently asking themselves like, who am I? What do I stand for? What are my ethics? And trying to get in tune with their identity in a way so they don't come past it. So this is the function also, for example, where if you have an ESFP or an ENFP, um, their FI is used as an anchor so that as they're going out there and exploring the world through their SC or their NE, you know, engaged in experiences and novelty and all of that, later on they'll come back and then they'll check in with their FI as a post-processing. So that's why these EFPs, they have to spend time alone and they have to check in. It's like, okay, I did a lot today. Did I enjoy that? Did I not? And something that can help them is journaling for example. So like really sitting down and being able to journal all of that stuff out and just processing through whatever they were feeling, whatever their emotions were, et cetera. Um, so, and then, you know, for an FI DOM, so like an ISFP or INFP, they kind of have to do the reverse. Like oftentimes they already know who they are to an extent and they already know what their values are and, you know, they're pretty anchored in that. So now it's about getting them into to do what the ESFP and the ENFP is doing, which is going out there and actually experiencing more life, you know, for the ISFP, like, hey, learn to express yourself through art and put yourself in situations where you're able to see reality and you're not stuck to these convictions and these ideals. Um, see how the real world works and then also practice how to like project what you feel like out onto the world in that way. Um, and then for INFPs, like look at the different ways that we could live life, look at the different cultures, you know, stuff like that. Be creative, look for novelty, put yourself in situations where you kind of have to act maybe outside of who you really are. And then you'll by then figure out who you really are <laughs> um, because you'll come back and then you'll be like, yeah, no, that wasn't me. I knew that I didn't like that. Or it's like, wow, you know, and now you've expanded your identity. You've expanded your FI in a way. So. IFPs go out there and experience more. EFPs, as you're experiencing, make sure that you post process so that you can actually have an anchor for like, as your ship is sailing all around the sea and everything like that, you have an anchor that's not keeping you, that that's keeping you from going out to sea like too far um, with that tertiary extroverted thinking that's just focused on getting the job done and getting the task done, even if, it's at the um, cost of your own heart and your own um, authenticity. Uh, so there's that. Plug in the charger here. All right. And so the next one on here is the focus on nuances of human emotion. 
that is another big aspect of introverted feeling. Introverted feeling, it has a magnifying glass, a microscope, essentially, on the inner human emotion, human emotional experience. So it's tracking the depth. Like uh, one of the ways I like to describe it when I'm like profiling people at times um, is that uh, for an FI user, okay, so for an FE user, generally speaking, um, it would appear that if we are to like have like a painter's palette of some sort, then we'll pretty much have one painter's palette and it'll be, it'll, and like if the colors have to do with like emotions and stuff, then it'll be like angry, happy, sad, you know, stuff like that, you know, and it's just one painter's palette in that way. So pretty much F users, they kind of see um, emotions like they're not looking at the nuances of emotions, especially not nearly as much as an FI user who, if we were to use that same analogy with them, then an FI user is more of the type to have a painter's palette, but it's labeled anger. And then it has all these different shades of anger. And then another painter's palette labeled sad. And then it has all these different shades of sad. Another painter's palette labeled happy all of these different shades of happiness. So it's paying attention to all of that. Um, and it's understanding that nuance of the human emotion. And then the next thing that I have on this list of the facets is that after it's able to also focus on the nuance of human emotion, it's able to also mirror the emotion by finding it in, the, in themselves. And so how FE users will literally feel your feelings in real time, um, especially like, you know, with that like FESE, -E, if they're like an NFJ or STP, you know, like, like just really being like viscerally there an FI user, they're able to, it's, it's kind of like a tuning fork of some sort. Like they'll hit it against, you know, like they're like, ding, you know what I mean? Like they'll, they'll, they'll hit the tuning fork and they're looking for that resonance. Like, okay, what's going to call back to my tuning fork and have me be like, ah, I found the match in that person. So they are so in tune with their own feelings, their own emotions, stuff like that, that when another person is feeling some type of way, an FI user is pretty much like subconsciously, some of them consciously looking into themselves and being like, oh, I think I know this emotion. And they're looking for the emotion that most closely resonates with the other person. Um, so a lot of FI users that I've profiled have literally said, even without knowing type, they literally said like, they sometimes can't even really like relate or resonate with someone in that way, unless um, they've already felt the emotion before. So that's a really big thing that's like been interesting, you know, whereas like an FE user, um, they feel what that person is feeling. And so even if they hadn't felt it before, like they're able to really gauge. But FI users, like, because they're always exploring their inner terrain of emotions, it's like pretty rare that, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I haven't felt that emotion before. Or like, I can't at least find like, oh, if I mix this shade and this shade, then maybe that'll create this for that person, which is a lot of times how I believe that NFPs will do things. Like that's where the FI and the NE will come together. Um, whereas like with SFPs, um, I think that they are able to use the visual cues a lot to aid their FI. Um, so they'll like look at you or they'll like, you know, gauge the energy in a way using their SE and then the FI is able to help them resonate what that might be. Um, so yeah, mirroring the emotion in that way. Um, they also keep a pulse on internal emotional experiences and impacts. So essentially anything that happens to the FI user, um, especially since they're like very like self-referential a lot of times, then anything that happens to them, they're thinking to themselves like, okay, how does this make me feel? How did that make me feel? How do you make me feel? And you pretty much like they're always keeping a track of that. Why do I feel this way? Whereas like, you know, other types oftentimes like they're not keeping track of what's happening to them emotionally and let alone they're not trying to observe and get to the bottom root of why are they feeling that emotionally. FI users are very skilled with that and that actually makes them 
very good at being able to look at the darkness of themselves and of other people because there it's almost like there's no such thing as a bad emotion for fi users um it's kind of like um i've i've described it um a few times as like a piano there are no such things as a bad key now if we are playing a certain song and you hit the wrong key then that was probably the wrong key to play at that time but there's no such thing as a bad piano key in that way so with FI users, it's pretty much like the same thing. Like there's not there's not a negative emotion. They don't see emotions often like that. They just see emotions as human emotion that they they really get in tune with and they try to their best to like understand in that way. And they're always tracking within themselves. Um, and that whole notion, for example, that FI users like um, are not in tune with other people's feelings. It depends on what you mean by in tune from my profiling sessions. Usually when it comes to, when I ask them, um, are you in tune, are you more in tune with your own feelings or with other people's um, than with FE users, they'll quickly, a lot of times like, no, definitely other people's because a lot of FE users, most of them, they're not thinking about their own feelings like at all. So it's like, nah, <laughs> I'm so clueless to my own feelings that nah. Whereas like with an FI user, a lot of times, they'll be like, hmm, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I want to say both, but maybe I am more in tune with mine, but I still can, I can still understand like other people's in a way. And it's like the, that pause a lot of times of them having like think about it. It's not, it's not a hundred percent. I won't, I don't, I don't want to say that, but it gives me a lot of clues. You know, when I'm profiling, I, I like to ask a lot of questions before I'm like, okay, this is really an FI user, okay? This is really an FE user. You can't just go off of like one thing. But um, this is a pattern that I've seen. And so when I see that they've actually taken a long time and then they're like really like, uh, and they're saying like maybe both or, and stuff like that, it's like, okay, yeah. No, because an FE user, once again, generally speaking, it's like, I'm clueless to mine a lot of times. So definitely more tapped in with other people's. Um, but yeah, an FI user is still able to be able to uh, identify somebody else's emotions. Just like I said earlier, finding it within themselves. And the more they're able to identify their own emotions, the better they're able to identify somebody else's. They're also capable of seeing various sides to themselves and even try on personas. So the trying on personas part is usually more for NFPs. Like, oh, like the uh, extrovert intuition is like, oh, let me try this. Let me try that, you know, like, and it's not to say that SFPs will never do this. For SFPs, it's usually just like, maybe like acting in a way, but like for NFPs, they're like, they're trying on like different personas, different, um, I guess that's the word I'll just stick with, like personas because they're seeing what resonates or they're at least playing with the possibility of being someone else, being something else, and then find it from there, being able to explore all of the feelings there. Um, Joel Mark Witt uh, from Personality Hacker, uh, he's an ENFP, uh, so he has FI as an auxiliary function, and he's using extrovert intuition as a dominant function. And there was something that I thought was interesting about what he said pertaining to this, which was that sometimes when he wants to really understand another person, he will pretty much act as them. So you know how like NI is able to um, just hop into another person's mind and understand their perspective in a way. Like for him as an ENFP, he said that he will actively put on that person's like persona and from acting as that person and like kind of like becoming that person, then he's able to now understand that person's motivations in a way like better. Um, and there's also like other NFPs that I know who have like tried on different personas, um, whether it be like trying to like copy somebody else in a way or just trying on like a different way of like presenting themselves. And then they track how they feel about that. Um, and then they're able to now from doing that, from exploring that, then they're able to find themselves. I think that's why a lot of NFPs love improv. Um, because it's like, yeah, let me just be someone else. And that's helping them find who they really are. Because then they kind of just add that component to themselves. Or even if they don't add it to themselves, they're now like, oh, so this is what it might feel like to be that person. Um, so yeah, that facet of 
being capable of seeing various sides to oneself um, and trying on personas, which also, by the way, that capability of being able to see various sides of themselves is a very interesting one because that often causes them to get mistyped. Like when you're in a profiling session, um, we were taught in our profiling class, for example, like if you're profiling someone and uh, they're constantly like just giving you a hard time in the sense of like, mm, I do both, I do both, no, but I'm both, I'm both, then usually that is an ISFP. Once again, it's not 100% accurate um, or it's not 100% of the time, I should say, but a vast majority of the time, I've tried this myself, it's like, you're a freaking ISFP um, because ISFPs being FI doms, once again, they're able to see so much of themselves and then having intuition third, a lot of times they're not really looking for the pattern of themselves. Um, they're just like, oh, no, this is how I was in that one instance. And so that's a part of me. So therefore I do both. It's not about like, oh no, I've been more frequently this. It's like, no, I do both. I am both. So that whole idea of like to define oneself is to, um, is to limit oneself. Yeah, ISFPs don't like that. And neither do INFPs, but INFPs are more often like tracking that pattern. Um, whereas like ISFPs tend to not be as much, but yeah, both of them still, because they're exploring themselves on such a deep level and all of their, you know, identity and emotions and stuff like that, then they can have the hardest time finding which personality type they are because they don't want to be limited. It's like, well, no, I, I, I use TI too. And like, no, well, I use this. And, and it's like, they see so much of themselves in that way that they don't want to feel like they've, they've limited themselves from that. Um, I use NI, I'm pretty good at NI, it, you know, it says the NFPs a lot of times. And so it's like, yeah, y'all get the point. Um, and then the last facet or second to last penultimate facet um, tends to identify differences between people and capitalize on them. So that is a big one. Um, I've noticed, and I said this in the extroverted feeling live stream, I've noticed a tendency for extroverted feelers to look for the commonality between them and other people or the commonality between people in general. Um, and I've noticed that FI users are often like, whoa, you're like that, that's so beautiful. I'm like this. And so neither way is wrong or right. It's just a difference in approach. And that doesn't mean that the FE user will never look at a difference. And that doesn't mean the FI user will never look at what they have in common. But a lot of times, like because the FI user is really trying to keep an individuality, then they're appreciating the beauty of other people, but they're kind of having like this distance, like, yeah, you stay you, I'm still gonna stay me. And like, this is me and that's you. Whereas like an FE user is oftentimes trying to like merge. They're trying to like, oh yeah, you're like this. I'm like that too. Whoa. You know, they, by the way, they, they probably are not going to say it like that. You know, I just have to clarify that because I think that anybody now who talks like that on TV is automatically like an EFJ and it's like, come on now. No, <laughs> that's not, that's not how it always is. But um, yeah, FE is often looking for the commonality between people. Um, that's how they're able to create that quote unquote harmony. Where it's like FI a lot of times is like appreciating the beauty and the differences between people. Um, and so they have more of a focus um, in that sense. And then lastly on my list, although I'm gonna add a bonus after this is FI is great at inner alignment. So last week when I was talking about FE, um, I talked about FE is like a round table where it's pretty much like, okay. And it's looking at people around them and it's like, all right guys, what are we gonna do? Or what, what's the democracy here? Like what's the majority vote? What is gonna get everyone's needs met the best that we possibly can? Um, and that's how FE like approaches things. That's how FE likes to make its decisions. Now FI, it's doing the same thing, but internally. So remember at the beginning, I talked about how FI is using motivations a lot of times. And so for FI, that round table is now internal. So they're looking at all of their different motivations 
and they're listening to all of the different feelings, all the different values, all the different motivations, all the different ethics, whatever it might be inside themselves so they can decide, okay, what's majority rule over here for me to make a decision? Because the majority rule will most likely determine who I really am, especially in this moment. I don't want to act outside of myself. Whereas like an FE user, generally speaking, does not have that strong of an identity in a way, or that strong of a, of a, of a need to not get away from their identity that they're going to, that like, so they're happy to outsource like, Hey, what do you guys want to do? Like, I don't have that much of a preference. I don't have that much of a, of an identity to protect in a way. So I'm happy, like what we decide won't be a reflection on my identity. In that way, I'm happy to do what you guys want to do and what's necessary for y'all. Whereas like for an FI user, it's not that they can never do that, but it's that a lot of times they're definitely checking in with themselves first. Um, and they're making sure that they will not compromise themselves because if they do, it's going to hurt them way more than it's going to hurt the FE user um, because it's going to affect them in that way. And then the last thing that I wanted to add, which let me go ahead and add it over here in my list that I'm creating uh, for my clients just before uh, I forget. I'll just write Michael Jackson here. Michael Jackson effect here for right now. I'll edit that later. Um, but what I mean by that is that the last facet that I'm going to talk about before I get to questions is that FI is often very good at projecting their feelings and having you feel whatever they're feeling. A lot of people might think that, oh no, this is more of like an FE kind of thing. But once again, like remember last week, um, I was talking about how a lot of times FE users are so self-conscious about how they're making other people feel a lot of times. You know, FI users, because of them wanting to be so authentic and they don't want to betray their inner selves and all of that, then they will actually focus more on, um, once again, being authentic, being themselves, and and not acting like not trying to hide who they are or what their feelings are in that sense. And then that being said, um, when they are performing, for example, because they get so deeply in tune with their own emotions in that way and their own, their own, like their emotional experience, then they're able to amplify that. So when you see like, for example, like Michael Jackson perform and he's able to, like he's on stage and he just goes like this or something like that. And everyone's just feeling this man, like as he sings. Like when you when you listen to certain singers, and or, and you see certain people like perform, for example, or like whether it be acting or musicals, or whatever. And then it's just like, wow, that is a lot of emotion that's in there, you know. Like that's usually, generally speaking, an FI user who's really tapped in to their own emotions, and they're able to amplify and blast that out the best that they possibly can. Um, and so once again, this is not to say that FE users can never do this, um, but FI users are generally the ones that are able to do this. Like, so for example, like Tony Robbins, a lot of people might've thought that he's an ENTJ or even an ENFJ. I personally, and I know that this is probably going to raise a lot of eyebrows, but I personally actually believe that he's an ENFP. Um, I also believe that, uh, what's that dude's name? Dude that cusses a lot, really? Gary V, Gary Vanerchuk. I know that OP types him as ENFJ. That's that's cool. I think he's a cool dude, but when when I sat down and I watched a whole bunch of his interviews and I was sitting down even with like classmates, we generally consented that like, no, he's using extroverted intuition um, and we believe that he's using FI. He's just a really nice guy. Um, and he's using TE for sure too. So, but anyway. Um, Tony Robbins and Gary Vaynerchuk, like these are people who really get deep into their emotional experience. Um, so with Tony Robbins, like he has to do a lot of emotional work. Like if you pay attention, if you look up like the stuff that he has to do before he has like one of his like shows and his, his speaking events and things like that, like he's really getting his emotional experience like in a very heavy spot so that when he gets into that room and he's amplifying it in a way, he wants it to be pure. He wants everybody to feel what he's feeling. He wants it to be contagious in that manner. 
Um, and yeah, that's, that's some really strong FI emotional Aikido. So that is my spiel on the FI facets. Once again, you might know a whole bunch of FPs that don't demonstrate or have all of these facets together. Um, but the function is the whole emerald. And the more that you are growing, then the more access you'll be able to have to these different facets of the whole emerald. Um, and for me as a coach, I'm here to help you to be able to tap into all these facets. I'm, I'm always seeing certain types and it's like, it's not that you're unhealthy. It's just that you're undeveloped from my perspective. And that's again, like not a bad thing. Um, I feel like, and I made a video on this before, like there's a difference between unhealthy, healthy, and developed. Um, when you're healthy, then you have a talent for it. You know, like you're, you're good at it. You're doing whatever you do. Um, you're, you're kind of like Violet from The Incredibles who she was able to use force fields and turn invisible at will. But when you're developed, then you're like Violet at the end of The Incredibles where she, she could have actually put a force field around the planet. Like now you've narrowed in so much on these superpowers of yours that you're able to expand it in that way. So um, that's what I do as a coach, essentially. Um, and yeah, let's get to these questions. Are they only able to identify motivations that they themselves had in the past? Okay, so I kind of, I feel like I kind of like already um, uh, said that. I, I hate saying the word like never, but what I will say is from my experience, it's rare that they, like when I've spoken to them, it's rare that they, that they uh, are able to I, like identify those motivations um, if they haven't already seen it in themselves. Um, and the way that once again, I see it like to go back to that painter example is that sometimes they're able to play with the idea of like, okay, I haven't necessarily seen this shade before. I haven't necessarily like experienced this, but I'm guessing that if I mix this shade and this shade, this is as close as I can get, or I'm getting that exact thing. Um, so, but even then, like, I feel like it'd it have to be like a pretty well-developed FI user. So, so that's my answer for that. I hope that that helps. What's up, Prometheus? F, cool. <laughs> Hello, Denzel. Since ISFP, INFP use FI and are kind of reluctant, to conflict, how to react when someone tries to force them away from their moral values. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, first of all, I mean, you shouldn't do this to anyone, but especially an FI Dom, do not try to get them to go outside of their moral values. Uh, they will abhor you, um, especially INFPs. Those, look, we talk about the INFJ door slam, INFPs hold grudges. I'm telling you, take it from me. They, they, they say it themselves. They will tell you themselves. That FISI, they will hold on to that. Um, so do not, and they will remember how, they will remember how you made them feel and they will hold on to that. And then sometimes their extroverted intuition can creatively transform that experience that y'all had to match even more however they feel. So it can amplify it to make, then remember things to be even worse than what it might have been. Um, and sometimes it works in the opposite where it makes things even like better. That's why sometimes INFPs are seen as like idealizing certain people because like, oh, we just kind of did this. Like, no, but it was like that. You know what I mean? Anyway, you do not want to <laughs> force them or even pressure them to go outside of their moral values because um, they will definitely react in a negative way. Um, is that answering your question? Kind of reluctant to how did they re how do they react or how to react how oh no. oh I think no how do they react when someone tries to force them away yep so I think I answered that yeah they they don't they don't like that <laughs> can you go into contrasting possible differences between FE values and FI values yeah so that's an interesting thing good question um, FI can also value harmony. You know, but for FI, it's like a it's it's like FE 
is going based off of understanding the interpersonal dynamics, how it's going to affect certain people, stuff like that. So it's coming from a different place. And so it's not even really like a conscious thing because FE is working with TI, you know? So it's like looking for a framework that kind of works for everyone. Um, and it's going in a more logical manner. Whereas like FI is going based off of like their core values in that way. Um, and so I wouldn't say that FE has core values. I would say that it has principles that are rooted in TI. Whereas like FI has more of the core values and then TE is able to like carry that out um, in a way. Um, so FI, if like an FI user grew up in a family of FE users, then the FI user is able to essentially become, uh, they become a lot kinder. They're, they're able to pretty much like focus on uh, things that FE users might usually already focus on naturally because they've adopted that as a value of theirs. But it's gonna be coming from a different place. It's more so, come. It's, it's, man, I'm trying to figure out like how I can show this. If you watch some of my profiling sessions, you'll see like some of the differences. Like, cause sometimes you'll see like FI users who it's like, oh, you would think that they're FE, but then when you look at the root of where it's coming from and how they say it and everything, then it's like, oh no, you're, you're coming from this place. Like, oh, well, no, cause I wouldn't want somebody to do this to me. So therefore I'm not gonna do that to another person in a way. Um, whereas like FE is just like understanding like, oh no, like it's not like as self-referential. I hope that's making sense. If not, drop another question, but yeah. Yes, I actually have a playlist for several shades of every emotion. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. Yeah, I have the painter's playlist. So I have happy, angry, sad. <laughs> and that's it. But I can't even imagine having like several shades. Like, oh man, I, I can't even use the several shades of emotion like analogy in depth because I don't even know what those shades are. Like my wife, Jamila, is the one who's always helping me with being able to identify that for myself. So yeah, that's funny. Those with the third and fourth FI means that they're less morally guided. I don't want to say that necessarily. It can be, yes. They're more likely to be, yes. But it's more so that because they like the TJs, they can have very strong morals. But for them, a lot of times, it's just a lot easier to just do what needs to get done. So like... If, if their dog has um, gangrene, I don't know, you know, if an ISFP sees that their dog has gangrene and they and uh, the dog needs to have their leg cut off, the ISFP will know that this is what needs to happen, but they're gonna have a crazy hard time doing it because they're, they care so much about the dog and there's certain values and yada, yada, yada. Whereas like a TJ, so like an, uh, ENTJ might still really care about the dog just as much as ISFP does, but they have more of an ability to put their own feelings, their own morals, their own values, whatever it might be aside to just do the job that needs to get done. Um, and so they'll, they'll handle it and they're just more capable. Um, I think that if you watch like Attack on Titan, for example, like uh, Captain Irvin, um, he's a great example, in my opinion, of an ENTJ. And he, he just, he knows, like, he has a heart. You can see that. But he also just knows how to get the job done, you know, like, and just, just do what needs to be done, um, even if sometimes it's going against uh, what his values might be because it's for the greater good in a way. Um, yeah. Do you have tips on how to avoid being self-referential during conversations so that we don't sound self-centered? Yeah. And I like that you said self-centered because I do think that FI is self-centered, but not selfish. It can be selfish. It has a proclivity to be selfish, but it's not inherently selfish. But I do believe that it is inherently self-centered. And that's okay because it's starting from itself. 
it's like understanding itself and then it's able to branch out in that way. Um, now the tips for being like less, to avoid being like self-referential, I think always make sure that once, I think that internally you'll always be self-referential, but before you speak, make sure that you kind of like filter it. So some people usually like if they're like, oh yeah, you know, I've, I've experienced this before too. And yada, yada, cause now you're like kind of like empathizing, but be sure that you don't make it about yourself. Um, that's where I, I've seen personally, some FI users like really go off, like somebody's like venting them or whatever. And then in them, they're earnestly just trying to help, but then it seems like they made everything mainly like about themselves in a way. And it's like, okay, this kind of now sounds like you're, you're trying to say that like, like you, you've had it even worse than they did. Um, and it's almost like now they need to comfort you. <laughs> so I would say like, that's, that's one way. Uh, yeah, hopefully that helps. Can you touch on the negative or unhealthy side of FI? Yes. So I guess I kind of just touched on that a little bit too with, uh, the over self-referential side of them, but, um, also they, uh, they can be very selfish when they're unhealthy. Um, and they can also, they, FI, like people talk about how FE manipulates, and I agree. FE is really good at manipulation, everything like that. But FI is really good at manipulation too. Don't let them fool you, <laughs> coincidentally. They are very capable of also like being able to, because they can understand your motivation, then a lot of times, these are the people that will like, they'll like, when they know, especially like, no, I don't want to say especially TJs, but just FI when it's unhealthy at times, if they know your motivation, they can use that against you. Like, oh, don't you want, like, I know that you want to uh, make sure that you, that you, uh, you get to the end over here. Right. So if you want to make sure that you do that, then that means you just have to do this, right? And like, like they're they're going to tap into something that they know that you desire and you want really badly, and they're going to push you kind of into going against your own morals to get what they want. Um, I think also another uh, good example is uh, if you ever watched The Greatest Showman, um, Barnum was an ENFP in there, and you see him, he starts to kind of like go on this uh, like there comes a part where like, even though he's helping everyone, he gets to a point where he's just paying so much attention to his TE that he forgets who he is. And he's just trying to get, so he's still serving his FI in a way because he's still going after what he wants, but his TE is overriding that. And he's forgetting who he is and how much cutthroat he's doing. Like he, and so then it gets to a point where he's like, he, it, something's affecting other people and he's like, but this will destroy me, you know? And it's just like, bro, stop thinking so much about yourself. You and look at how you've been affecting other people, which thankfully by the end, he was able to remember that and he caught himself again, you know? Um, but yeah, that's how somehow, like sometimes it can get um, pretty messed up. Also when they get like really, like they can be very sensitive. Like even my wife, ISFP, um, she admit that like, like everything, for FI doms is taken personally. Um, and me saying that is not to offend any FI doms out there, but it's just, that's just how they filter things. Once again, as an FI dom, everything that comes into you is being filtered. Like, how do I feel about that? Even if it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> it's like, how do I feel about that? How did that affect me? And so even with my wife, you know, like if I, for example, I'm African, I like spicy food, but she admits to me that sometimes like when she sees me like add like a little bit more pepper to the food or whatever, then she she can get like a little bit offended for a moment. Um, and then she has to like remind herself, oh no, Denzel's not saying, that hasn't that doesn't have to say anything or reflect anything about me or me as a bad wife or whatever, whatever. It's just, he prefers this food and that's okay. But everything is kind of like an extension of themselves at times. Um, and so then that could really make things like hurtful because if you if you're if you're misunderstanding who they are um, and you, they feel like they're being misrepresented, oh, you're gonna get it, <laughs> you know. And so uh, make sure that you really take the time to understand them. Um, if they view themselves in a certain way, be gentle with them. 
um, and validate how they view themselves, but then also try, maybe find a way to help, to help them see what you're seeing while still being gentle. Because again, like they can really lash out um, if they're not healthy. Um, yeah. I feel like people with FIs, their first function might actually be reluctant to put on another personality because they can tell immediately that it's not them. I, I agree, but they see it as fun. So it's like, they'll do it for fun. They're not, they're not like actually taking on the persona like for themselves. So they, so a lot of times they'll see it as a challenge. So this is usually with EFPs, especially ENFPs. They'll like do it like the NE wants to play around and then the FI is kind of like gathering from that. But with an INFP, for example, like they'll have fun in, in being able to explore in that way. But then, yeah, they'll be able to know like, yeah, but this is not me. Like that's separate um, versus like some other types who might get too involved. And then now it's like they're confusing themselves for the character in a way. Um, but I do, yeah, like I, I get what you're saying though. Question, is the CS Joseph interactive chart have any accuracy? What do you think of it? Great question. I'm not familiar with the interactive chart that he has. Honestly speaking, I'm not a huge fan of CS Joseph, but I don't want to say that the uh, inter interactive chart is like inaccurate just because, you know, like just because I'm not a huge fan of him doesn't mean that he never says right things. Um, and so uh, I will actually, I'll, I'll check it out. Um, and then for the next live stream, I will remember this question and I will bring that up um, during the Q&A. Uh, and if you want, you can um, cop, you can uh, post the link to it um, in the comments, um, either in the live chat or on the actual video, and I'll check it out sometime. I'm seeing a lot of Hollywood stars with unhealthy FI that are trying out different skins without the important part of FI morals. Yeah. Um, and it, it can be as big as them going against their morals so that they can get money or even something small like, uh, I forgot the name of the movie, but the one with Lady Gaga in it. Um, I believe Lady Gaga is ISFP. Um, and in that movie, she was also ISFP. I want to say it was Star something. Ugh, dang, I can't remember. But I feel like you guys know what movie I'm talking about. And they were trying to, they pretty much just started like changing her. Like, like, oh yeah, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna make more money if you change your hair blue and stuff like that. And like, if you're like an, an FI user who, who really feels like they don't, like that's not who they are, will not do it. Even if it means like they make less money because they want to stick true to who they are. Whereas like a higher TE user, you know, if they're not <laughs> scared of looking like foolish or something like that, it's like, no, I'm gonna do it because if this is going to get me money, then it's going to get me money, you know? So, uh, and it's not that higher TE users are just only about money and not morals, but like, it's just, it, it might be easier for them to do that. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of, uh, oh, great. I just saw the spam here. Sorry, guys. Didn't mean to, uh, <sighs> sorry about that. That, that's crazy. Anyway. That really just derailed my trail of thought. Oh yeah, there's a lot of FI users in Hollywood, um, for sure. I'm not saying they can't do whatever they want, but I just noticed that trend. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, my internet was acting up. F to my, oh, F to my internet modem. <laughs> okay, well take sad for example. There's a tragic kind of sad, a melancholic sad, a depressed, heavy kind of sad, a numb kind of sad, running quiet. Wow. Yeah, you are definitely FI. <laughs> Cause tra isn't tragic and depressed are like the same to me. And then melancholic is just like, I can see how melancholic is like the step right before tragic and depressed. <laughs> numb kind of, ah, oh, numb. 
Dang, I just need to like sit at the feet of y'all FI users and just give me like a whole lesson on all of the shades of human emotion. But yeah, that's, I'll take notes. I'm taking notes. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Or happy, you can be ecstatic or peaceful, content. I'm always peaceful, content. That is it. Uh, I think that especially when I'm making like uh, videos though, I can come off more ecstatic. Uh, Cause you know, performance to an extent. Um, I don't view myself as like bubbly though. Uh, I think that that's like a very specific. So maybe I have a little bit of nuance after all. Um, yeah. Giddy, recommend general optimism and zest for life. That's really so cool. <laughs> a star is born. That's the name of the movie. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Lady Gaga in that movie, I think that you see a really good example of an FI Dom in there. Um, I forgot what her partner was in the movie, but I do know there was like a manager um, who I believe was an ENTJ and uh, was kind of like trying to get her to do things outside of her comfort zone. And I don't even remember like, I know that at, at at some point she did resist, but um, um, yeah. Another good movie to see this example of kind of like a similar thing. It's a great movie, not even a good movie, a marvelous movie that I would love to just recommend to y'all is Beyond the Lights. It's so good, guys. Check it out when you guys can. It's beautiful. Um, highly recommend it. No, tragic is really loud and you can feel clearly. Depressed is more heavy, but depressed is more heavy, but more silent. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yo, y'all are deep. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I, I'm, I'm trying to force my NI not to like start processing all of this right now on live. Like I have to do this probably during my walk back to my apartment because <laughs> that's that's some deep stuff right there. Um, thank you. I really appreciate that. I'm always so glad to see y'all hop on these live streams and stuff. Um, means a lot. Um, anyway, I think that's the final question. I will give 10 seconds just in case if anybody else has any last comments or remarks before I end the broadcast. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. Thanks, y'all, for tuning in today. Really deeply appreciate it. Um, be back next week, hopefully. Uh, I will try to keep y'all posted on uh, what the uh, on what the um, next week's is going to be. Actually, I have the list right here. Next week, we are talking about extroverted thinking in all of its facets. Oh, and that's going to be a good one because I feel like a lot of people really uh, extroverted thinking gets truncated to like some very small stuff, and it's like. There is a lot to extroverted thinking that we don't really see. It's not just this dogmatic, like telling people what to do and stuff like that. There's a lot to it. Um, so I'm excited actually to, to talk about that. Um, but yeah, be sure to leave comments, questions, concerns. Um, hit me up if y'all want to be profiled. Um, $100 for profiling session. It'll come with the recording of the profiling session. You can pay it in installments. Um, the details for that should be in the description. And if you want any other coaching, the details for that is also in the description. And yeah, thanks again. Um, yeah, after TE, then I'm doing TI. Uh, so yeah, just so y'all know, y'all can, y'all can keep up with that. TI is going to be fun too. All of these are honestly going to be fun. Um, and I will be last just so you guys know. I know that's everyone's favorite function. My favorite function personally is TI, but I know it's like a lot of other people's favorite function. And so we'll save, not the best for last, but you know, you know, you know. All right. Y'all have a great rest of your evening.
<laughs> Good night.